Now, many of you would have learned that the lysosomes of the cell are also known as the scavengers. Do you know that they are actually recyclers and not just scavengers? Let's dig deep into it and understand what the lysosomes actually do. Just like bricks form the basic units of a building, the cells form the basic units of a living organism. When you view cells using an electron microscope, you can see that each cell houses a wide variety of organelles that are connected together through intracellular networks. There are various organelles in the cell, such as nucleus, ribosomes, rough endoplasmic reticulum, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, Golgi body, and lysosomes. It is the lysosomes that we will talk about in the further slides. When you look at a cell through an electron microscope, you will see that the lysosomes are irregularly shaped vesicles. They are not always round like you see in this picture. They are usually irregularly shaped vesicular organelles. And in one cell, you can see hundreds of them and they function to keep the cells clean. Each individual cell has hundreds of them. These little planar cells or lysosomes are also known as the scavengers of the cell. And that is because they provide an intracellular digestive system that allows the cell to digest substances such as damaged cellular structures, food particles that have been ingested by the cell, and unwanted matter such as bacteria. So inside the cell are these lysosomes. There are many other organelles within the cell. The cells continuously are exposed to outside particles such as food and bacteria. And there can also be some old damaged structures within the cell. And all these waste products are digested by the intracellular digestive system provided by the lysosomes. Because they get rid of all the waste materials within the cell, they are also known as the scavengers of the cell. So the waste materials such as food particles are taken inside the cell by means of special mechanisms known as phagocytosis. And the waste material is then broken down by the lysosome. That is possible because the lysosome contains digestive enzymes. And these enzymes help break down the larger food particle into smaller micronutrients. And later, these micronutrients are taken out of the cell into the circulation where it can be useful for the living being. So for this reason, the reason that the lysosomes don't just break down the particles and act as a scavenger, but they also help in breaking down the particles to useful substances that can then be reutilized by the body. So for that reason, they're also known as the recyclers of the cell. 
This is a description of the structure of an individual lysosome. Each lysosome, like any other cell organelle, is housed within a membrane. And inside the lysosome are a multitude of enzymes, which are hydrolytic enzymes. There are almost 40 different types of hydrolytic enzymes that function to break down various waste materials into micronutrients. Few of those enzymes and their substrates are listed here. For example, the ribonuclease enzyme within the lysosome helps break down RNA of the cell and the deoxyribonuclease helps break down DNA, whereas the phosphatase helps break down phosphate esters, the glycosidase helps break down complex carbohydrates, the aryl sulfatases helps break down sulfate esters, the collagenases help break down collagens, and the catepsins helps break down proteins. And there are very many more of these enzymes that help break down complex particles into micronutrients that can help the body reutilize the nutrients. To summarize, the recent advances in technology and detailed learning of the cells has identified the lysosomes to be more of recyclers than the scavengers that they were thought to be before. The lysosomes engulf large substances and break down the macromolecules such as proteins, polysaccharides, and complex lipids that are present inside the large substances such as waste particles like food and damaged cell into their respective micromolecules such as amino acids in case of proteins, monosaccharides in case of polysaccharides, and free fatty acids when it comes to complex lipids. These micromolecules such as amino acids, monosaccharides, and free fatty acids are then transported out of the lysosomes into the cytoplasm of the cell via specific exporters that are present within the membrane of the lysosome. And these micromolecules, which are now present in the cytoplasm of the cell, are then reutilized for energy homeostasis or in biosynthetic pathways. And because the lysosomes help break down the complex particles or the complex waste materials into small micronutrients that can then be reutilized by the cell, they are also known as the recycling centers of the cell. There are a few rare conditions where a lysosomal enzyme may be congenitally absent, that is, may be absent in a child right from birth. And this is mostly due to genetic reasons. And because the enzyme is absent, the material that the enzyme normally degrades gets accumulated within the cell and that leads to lysosomal storage diseases and though these diseases are rare when present they can be serious and prove fatal so the basic cause of this enzyme deficiency is genetic defect 
and by means of research and gene therapy certain promising effects have been found in treating some lysosomal storage disorders namely Gotter and Fabry diseases. Here is a list of the lysosomal storage diseases and the proteins or enzymes that are deficient in their respective diseases and a list of the materials that get accumulated because the lysosomal enzymes don't break them down and here is a list of the major organs that are affected due to respective lysosomal storage diseases and in most of the lysosomal storage diseases the cns or the central nervous system is also affected for example in gotcher disease the defective protein or the deficient enzyme is the beta glucosidase and usually like i mean normally the beta glucosidase helps break down glucosyl ceramide and glucosyl sphingosine and because the enzyme is deficient in gotcher disease these complex materials are not broken down into the micronutrients instead they get accumulated as waste products within the cell and this mainly affects the spleen liver and bone marrow and it also affects the cns and in Hurler disease the enzyme deficient is alpha hydronidase and because it is deficient the substances such as dermatin sulfate and heparin sulfate are not broken down thereby leading to organomegaly that is enlargement of the organs and it also affects the skeleton eyes and the cns i hope i helped you understand how well the lysosomes function more as recyclers than just scavengers of the cell if you found this video helpful please consider hitting the like button and subscribe to my channel to help me make more such useful content in the future and kindly leave your feedback in the comments below share this video with your friends so that they can also find value in this content until then happy learning see you next time thank you for watching my video